Hey guys, what's up? It's Dusty here, back with another crypto video. Cardano's Charles Hoskinson questions Justin Sun's $5 million lunch investment. In which case, Charles Hoskinson hosted an AMA session on YouTube where the entrepreneur spoke about Cardano's much-awaited update releases. He began by ensuring his viewers about the completion of the Shelley era by 2020 as already planned. When asked about his take on Justin Sun's launch back out, Hoskinson compared his previous $5 million investment by saying, I spent $5 million on project capital to basically set an entire smart contract research and development program for well more than the year. With 19 people and some of the world's top scientists, what's more useful to your ecosystem? And while emphasizing on Shelley's launch as a top priority, Hoskinson hinted at several on-hold projects that will be built slash launched after Shelley provides the required infrastructure for his company. Going forward, the crypto advocate also highlighted Gold's foundational problem of ownership and in-house storage. He added, that is why I love crypto, because Bitcoin at this point, basically digital gold is not going to go away. It has the same value proposition. You can get so much better security out of Bitcoin than you can ever leave. Uh, ever do on physical gold. And in the AMA, he also addressed some of the light topics as well, but it managed to reveal Cardano's aggressive stance towards infrastructure development. Moreover, the one-sided conversation between Hoskinson and his viewers sparked a new level of confidence among the ADA community as Shelley's 2020 launch promises related innovations that may reward the holders. So yes, guys, you've read it here first. Charles Hoskinson's AMA session was pretty interesting. Um, again, I watch him almost every time that I can like I, I do watch him eventually uh, but most of the time i watch him almost instantly live if i can and in this case he was also discussing a little bit of a difference between tron and uh, cardano there and yes you can definitely notice as well how the stance towards the five million or 4.3 or whatever million dollar lunch from justin sun is is being looked at from way different perspectives uh, around the difference crypto leader so to speak and charles hoskinson here compares it with his own five million dollar investment there's been some others who say look how many other things you could have done with that five million like there's many people being different but i can see justin sun's stance as well where if he can convince a person like warren buffett to adopt cryptocurrency or to be uh, positive towards crypto it could spark the whole cryptocurrency market because such a huge example for many of these investors like for me personally uh, Warren Buffett has definitely been an example because he's been one of the best investors ever. So, you know, if he changes his stance towards crypto, that could definitely change the world as well. But again, it's just how you want to spend $5 million. He, he didn't have to do it that big, but okay. Now, another article that I had for Cardano was Cardano price analysis. Cardano is still submerged in the bearish level. And again, I've covered Cardano many times on the channel, and I'm definitely still quite positive on the coin. But... If we're talking about price, then Cardano is not really my number one out there. Again, Cardano has not been performing too well for quite a period of time here, and it's definitely also been reflected in, in how the community reacted to it. I mean, it's pretty obvious to see that Cardano has just not been having the best time, and I'm definitely of the opinion that some other people have noticed this as well and started to take action towards it, but hey, you know, that's just my my opinion and what i'm trying to say with that is that people have started to sell or not support the coin as much as they um they used to and yeah i think that is pretty annoying but it's okay so what i wanted to say here is actually if you check out the coin market cap here you can see cardano is at about 5.5 cents now if you look at the chart on a weekly or even a monthly basis it's been quite sad and quite um, scary, so to speak, as they're 96% down from their all-time high, really doing as one of the worst out of the whole market cap here. Again, if you, if you check out the articles from the community, if you check out all the people talking about it, everybody's been quite negative. Even though the updates and the general progress is coming on really quite nicely, I've been really seeing sort of a uh, stagnation in terms of support, especially for the videos and for the content and for the Reddit posts. Everything's just been going downhill, um, even though the progress has been definitely keeping up now guys before we actually continue here make sure you press the like button on this video if you are enjoying it and also make sure you go ahead and check out my second channel called dusty finance a link for that is in the description below but i want you guys all to go ahead and check it out it's a cool channel with a lot of videos here on it how to invest 500 dollars a month how to achieve financial freedom like the one percent how to make passive income with a thousand dollars right now they're all advertisement free there's no advertisements on it um, I really like to enjoy these videos and make them and make sure you go ahead and check them out right now. It's definitely worth a little check. 
Cardano's Charles Hoskinson likens government's crypto involvement to the Chernobyl disaster. Again, it's also a really interesting article. Cardano's Charles Hoskinson shared his insights on Facebook, uh, says Libra, and the government intervention in his latest AMA. Over the past few weeks, Facebook says Libra has faced a barrage of criticism from lawmakers further delaying the launch of the coin. Hoskinson suggested that the involvement of lawmakers in cryptocurrencies was nothing but fun as they contemplated their views on the adoption of cryptocurrencies. While hinting at politicians to stand on the dollar monopoly, Hoskinson suggested that lawmakers were hesitant about the adoption of crypto as they did not want to mess with the dollar, which would lead to monetary instability. Arguing against this notion, he said, some of them had the guts to say that the US dollar needs to be the global standard. He also questioned the power vested in these lawmakers, claiming that people are bound to abuse their power, and the only solution to this is the competition. It also implies that cryptocurrency is a brute force battle against crypto or currencies like the euro, yuan, or dollar. And Hoskinson also echoed his belief that crypto will open doors to several innovations, starting with faster wire transfers and the creation of new programming languages, in addition to existing languages. So again, th that might be a thing of the future as well, where you just, under the normal languages, and you know, you can just start to learn more pro that would actually be quite cool right if we in normal languages start to include programming languages even though you, you it's kind of hard to talk in that sense and you still need uh, a normal language to operate the coding language the programming language the crypto enthusiast further compared the government's involvement in crypto to the chernobyl disaster that took place in the soviet union several years ago he said that people are well aware of the fact that the government has a certain degree of flexibility towards corruption but once the standard level of flexibility is surpassed, it would cause distress to the entire system. He added, the Soviet Union had a way of doing things, and then this global event happens, which kind of busted the lid on the entire Soviet system, and they couldn't just sweep it under the rug. They needed almost a million people to participate in the cleanup, and every single person in Europe cared very deeply about that. Hoskinson concluded the topic by suggesting that cryptocurrencies and into the financial system in 2008 caused people to reflect on the monetary system and question financial bodies like the IMF. On a lighter note, he added that he was bullish about crypto, eventually transforming the world into a better place. And that is where we also want to leave off with Cardano, as we are all agreeing that the cryptocurrencies are going to take this whole world to a new level. And yes, sorry if you can hear a plane, it's a very deep noise, but um, hey, that can sometimes happen if you have planes close by. And yeah, we're all of the opinion that cryptocurrencies are going to be changing the way we know the world right now. It's just a question of when it's going to happen. And Charles sometimes says it's going to probably take another 10 years or so for another bull run to occur. Uh, but Cardano is going to be the first trained out of cryptocurrency is what he says. There's a lot of positive things that I could fit into a basket, but the real answer, nobody knows. Bitcoin price holds support as four hour golden cross forms. Bitcoin steady on support. Altcoins melt again. The meltdown is not so much in place anymore um we're not doing too bad too bad here but yeah the euphoria as bitcoin price raced into the 12k zone was cut short yesterday as it dumped even faster just straight afterwards the minor retreat was halted by support and bc appears to be slowly climbing back up during asian trading again today so bitcoin is steady on support that has already been so for uh quite a while but Bitcoin has now dropped below the 50 hour moving average, but it has held this level and the RSI on this time frame is below 50, which could indicate further upsides. On the four hour chart, a golden cross is about to form, which is a largely bullish signal. You can see it right there where the MA is crossed. Here's the 200 MA and the 50 MA in these colors. And they're crossing over, which is a golden cross, which is mostly bullish in the crypto space. Dave the Wave said, as far as an update on the fractal goes, this correction, assuming a further correction, looks not to be as steep. This fractal may have run its course as, with any comparisons, they will break down at some point. You can see here, yep. As far as an update on the fractal goes, yeah, you can see what it says right there. And all coins have melt again. Yeah, it's definitely true, guys. Um, not too much to say on that, actually. I don't want to cover. North Korea reportedly stole $2 billion in wave of clever attacks. I saw this everywhere on the news yesterday, and I, you know, I'm not that much of a traditional news type of guy, but I thought it would be worth to quickly mention for all of you that there's definitely some speculation going around that North Korea has been hacking um, to get cryptocurrency, $2 billion worth, supposedly. Again, I don't actually have too much info on the situation, so I don't want to speculate on it. I don't know how much is allowed on YouTube anyway, 
But all I know is that there's a big discussion going on, and many people are saying, yeah, they're thieves, you know, um, they're hackers, they're st stealing from cryptocurrency exchanges, they're hacking them to get all the money, but who can, um, who can really say? Like, we don't have the real info, we don't know if it's just, like, America trying to make them look bad, we don't have, not have any idea. Binance KYC hack, CZ denies that scammers stole thousands of user data. So there was a KYC hack on Binance. Reports have been going out around Binance Crypto Exchange that was allegedly hacked as thousands of KYC user data were on Telegram Messenger. The solicitude of the major exchange users occurred when the posts of passports and identity cards allegedly owned by Binance users appeared on the Telegram channel named Find Your Binance KYC. That is pretty scary, but CZ actually says that it's not the fault of Binance. The conclusion of the history, or let's read a little bit further. The head of Binance Crypto Exchange, CZ, reacted to the situation immediately. He stressed that the incident is under investigation and more information will arrive soon. The conclusion of the history was not long. In an hour, CZ posted, which, uh, or published a post which noted that the news is old, just a different interpretation. At the moment, there are no proofs that indicate any KYC copies have been stolen from Binance, and the shared data did not include the digital watermark of the digital trading platform brand. After a while, Zauri tweeted a video with a brief explanation of the situation, which says that the data was supposedly leaked to the network via third party all the way back in 2018. Binance statement regarding the current situation, according to the representatives of the major crypto exchange, a certain unidentified person threatened to terrorize the company, demanding a whopping 300 Bitcoin. And Binance refused to cooperate with a blackmailer, and he began to disseminate data on the network soon. First and foremost, there are inconsistencies when comparing this data to the data in our system. At present, no evidence has been supplied that indicates any KYC images have been obtained from Binance, as these images do not contain a digital watermark, watermark imprinted by our system. With that said, our security team is hard at work of pursuing all possibility leads in attempting to identify the source of these images, said representatives of the major trading exchange platform. And again, I'm also thinking that, you know, it could be the way, but we really can't tell here as it could also just be a person who hacked an um, easier to hack exchange and then just tried to, you know, get Binance for 300 BTC because that's the exchange that could pay it in the simplest and also has the biggest um, image to, to pay for, really. So that's a big difference that I'm seeing right there. Uh, next article, though, Litecoin price can't sustain the $100 level despite block reward halving. Now, it has become apparent that Bitcoin's surge to $12,000 and beyond has come to an abrupt halt earlier this morning. While no major damage has been done in the process, the uphill battle remains in place. Because of this sudden turn of events, the other markets are also bleeding value. Once again, one of the blocker victims is Litecoin, as the expected pump following the block award halving was very short-lived. And now, again, like I said yesterday, there was a very, very big difference in what happened to what people had expected. So the expectation really was that Litecoin was going to do very, very good just before, during, and even after the block halving. But in reality, it actually did not change very much. It actually did not do um, anything, to, so to speak. And the price was just pumped for a little while and then just dropped straight afterwards and then kind of stayed there. There was also some questions whether or not all the miners were going to abandon the network, but it did not happen and everything was kind of more neutral than expected. It was nothing really over the top, nothing special, and people were expecting that, so that's a little bit of a, of a downfall, so to say. I guess that's what people got maybe a little bit sad over, but in the long run, you know, it might be better. This chart shows you the perfect moment to buy Bitcoin, and that's, again, pretty interesting, but we're going to look at that in the next video. So if you're interested in knowing when to buy Bitcoin, when to buy some of the cryptocurrencies, make sure you watch the next video. We're going to be talking about that, and I'll see you guys again in another crypto video, guys. Make sure you press the like button if you enjoyed. Make sure you check out my second channel called Dusty Finance. And also, guys, I have a Patreon page. Make sure you check it out in the description below.